Hey guys, <clears throat> my name is Jason. I'm starting a new channel for um, lots of guys out there that are asking questions about Untangle stuff. Um, I've been using it since 2010 and went from there. I was a huge fanboy, a lot of forums I was on bragging about it because I really liked it. And I've gone through so many firewalls in the last 10 years that I just keep coming back to Untangle because I know it really well. Other than that, I just learned some Fortinet stuff, so I'll be posting that on this channel too. But I'm going to start the video off with um, a quick install of Untangle, how to install it. I know it's the most lamest video, and it's actually pretty dry. I actually fast forward lots of it because I pre-recorded it. Um, but I learned something doing this video because a long time ago, you would install it, set a username and password, and then log into it, and then log into your account, and then add all your uh, modules and stuff like that. Now you have to set up an account first before you can do anything with the Untangle box. And I've fought with that a couple days. But anyways, <clears throat> just letting you know, starting a new channel, um, if you have questions about things on Untangle or you're like me where you just read the documentation on the fax site for Untangle and just go, what? Does not make sense? Um, let me know, reach out, put comments in the video, um, in all videos, I'm going to put my email address in there so you guys can send me videos and requests and stuff. If you can't figure something out or you want me to do a video, uh, let me know. Um, i got a couple ideas in my head. Um, I'm part of the Untangle group on the forum and on uh, Facebook. And a lot of guys have messaged me privately and say, hey, do a video on this, do a video on that, do a video on that. So I'm going to keep it rolling, a couple videos coming out. Um, but I wanted to do a, a quick intro for myself and the basic of setting up Untangle 16 point, mm, I think it's four, I could skip to the end of this video, I think it's 16.3, sorry. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> so if you have questions, let me know. Um, I'm going to narrate this video right now because I pre-recorded this and uh, I'm going to go from here. So I'm going to let you know. I have a Datto box, and I really like these boxes because they're quiet. Um, this one pushed uh, my fiber gigabit internet connection just fine. I had no issues with this box doing everything. This one's an i3 quad core, I believe it is. Does it say how many cores it is at the end of the video here? Uh, four cores. That's actually, I think, a dual core with two, uh, four hyper threads. Got eight gigs of RAM, and I had a spare 512 gig cheap SSD in here. but. It's tiny. It's a repurposed Datto box. It actually says Datto when you turn it on, but um, Intel makes these. You can find them on um, online, but I've got a much powerful box over there in my rack. I'll do a video of my whole home network here, but um, quick little picture here. I'll put a picture in the video so you guys can see a lot better, um, but these are, I got this for free from one of my friends at work, and um, yeah, so uh, I'll do a video or a quick description on this in the video here of what each port does and then um, go from there. So as we look at the ports inside the video, I'll put the picture in here, you'll see that it's got a one stick of eight gigs of RAM and then the cheap Sun East. I've never heard of them, but I had it. It's just a cheap drive that I had in there. And on the back, you'll see from left to right, we have power. And this box has HDMI and DisplayPort, Etho 0 for in and ETH1 for out, two USB ports, actually three, two USB 3.0 ports and a 2.0 port. Um, and I installed Entango with the trusted little USB stick and port 2.0 for compatibility issues. Three, it kind of, eh, I don't know if Debian really liked it too much, but 2.0, flawless and it worked. So, I recorded myself with my little HDMI to USB dongle, which gave me exactly what you would see when you set this device up um, going through here. So when you look at the video, we turn it on, turn the box on, it says Datto, push F8 to uh, enter the boot menu. I get into it, we go to USB 2.0, it boots into uh, a dangle, and does a graphical install. You could do the normal install, it's just text-based. It might be a little bit easier on a video card, etc. etc. Loads the firmware. And let's see here, skip a little bit more. It takes the CD-ROM, starts installing all the components and drivers. 
And then it comes up and says, detect your hardware, configure the network. So this is different because before it wouldn't do the network before, but now it does. So it's a little bit different. So I guess it assumes that there's a network connection. So when you go to set up your account, because you get that option to create your administrator account, when you do that, uh, before it would get all this, do it all, and then it would boot to the console and then it would push you through your network wizard to um, do different things and set your IP addresses and all that. Now you set an account and then you go in to untangle on the CMD, uh, the portal, I'll show you at the end of the video here, that it forces you to log in and then you can push settings to it. It's like a, the opposite way of setting it up. It's kind of different, I guess, but that's the new way it's going. Um, I highlighted in the video here, select the right disk because I've installed this on other drives where it's been multi-booting. Um, not this box, but other boxes where they have multiple drives in it. So the one thing I wanted to show you guys, just make sure you point out to the red disk. Uh, I'm going to skip fast forward here because it's pretty basic from here on. And then it... Reboots, and this is where you get the console, the big green, the big green uh, window. Before you would click launch client. Where'd my screen go? Oh, it's paused. Uh, before you'd get the launch client, and then it would force you through to the network setup, and you'd set your password, your your subnet, and all that stuff. And if you were into transparent mode, I think it's called transparent mode. You have different, different modes where you can put the box in between another firewall and use it to do its features, or it could be the actual whole firewall, but now it's different. So it boots now and forces you into a, um, let me just see here, into a setup page. So it says, thanks for enjoying our setting up on Tangle. Uh, you have to log in. If you don't have your login, it'll force you to do that. But if the box isn't on the internet, you won't be able to do the next step, so you'll have to figure out how to do that by... And what I do is I just plug it into a standard network, and then you can do that, and you can do all your stuff to do. So what I have mine um, set up is I'm just having it on my normal network, so that gets an internal, and then it'll go out and then talk to the command center. So I created an account, and what I created was jason at jasonslab.ca, and I'm going to go buy a license so I can show you guys all these features. And you'll see here... That takes you on tangle.com. It can force you to sign up or you can log in. They do have 2FA. I just don't have it set up on this account. I'll probably be doing that later tonight. And you'll see that log in with Jason's lab. Oh, you can sign in with a Google account. Hmm. Yeah. Nah. And then we get our UID. I'll probably block that out so nobody can see it. Click continue, and then here's where we put all our information in there to continue on. So I put in my min password. Now this min password box right here is the actual min password for this, not your account for Untangle. And then we'll go through this a little bit quicker. I put in the password, the education, and password you created, we got admin. Now I always select no for saving the usernames and passwords because we don't want that saved. And this brings us to the 
um, command center on the actual computer. You'll notice that the CPU usage is a little bit high on this because it's downloading all the packages all at once right now. It's doing all the updates and stuff. So the CPU um, usage goes up. I think it does it on my high-end box too for that maybe two, three minutes. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video, this does gigabit by gigabit no problem. When you start adding more stuff to it, it gets a little bit slower, of course, because it's only an i3-5010. 50, so it's not really going to handle everything that I threw it. That's why I upgraded to my nice uh, super micro box that I have in my uh, IT rack there. But as you can see, this is the normal um, standard uh, dashboard you get. And the dashboard I really like. I've used a lot of firewalls in the last 10 years. And Untangle, you guys have done a great job. If you log into the web browser and you want to see something's going on, you see it right now. This is what you see and you can see all the critical things you want. So good job on that. You guys did a really good job on this. Whoever created that at Untangle. Um, so that's basically the gist of the video. It's pretty simple. It's nothing special. Um, I'm sorry that it's really dry. Um, I didn't really want to go over too much of a video because I want to give you guys an intro, tell you guys what I'm going to be doing in the video, and hopefully you guys send me requests and I can help everybody. Even if it's a simple request, if you're new to Untangle and you need some questions answered, my video, my email address will be in the links below. So if you have questions, send me an email. And um, we'll go from there. So, my name is Jason, and uh, we'll go from there. You guys have a great day, and uh, see you later.